Good day everyone. I will show you a general overview on Autodesk Revit 2018 with everything you need to start as beginners. The Revit name was inspired by the ease of making changes. Revit is a contraction of Revise Instantly. Autodesk Revit is a professional building information modeling software for architects, engineers, designers, and contractors used to design buildings and structures in its 2D and 3D elements. It is 4D beam capable software that automatically produces coordinated and complete model based building design and documentation, like updating floor plan elevations, section, 3D visualizations, and access building information from the building models database. We will learn the basic guidelines and important features as first timers to Revit. This is the startup page when we open Revit. Its interface and components are designed to be efficient and to simplify your workflow. On the right corner is the resources panel, which gives information, news, and updates from Autodesk. In the center, show several ready templates ready to be used. On the left side, shows everything you need to start with the new and existing projects or family below. Projects and families are two different entities. This is an example of a project. The standard project is used to design your whole building with some objects as the general environment. While families like this chair are single objects used as ready templates to be imported on Revit projects. Now let's start up by opening a new empty project. Just go to New and then choose Architectural Template. This contains presets necessary for architectural drawings. The Revit workspace shows up and it has a very simple setup. Let's have a quick look and identify the Revit's user interface components. At the top of the Revit window, stretching this long, is the ribbon. The ribbon is a menu bar containing all the features or the main interface, its components and drawing tools needed to do a project. The tabs consist of architecture, structure, massing, and many more along with their features. You can scan over each button by clicking on the arrow down to choose on its sub-components. Moving on, let's explore the Architecture tab. The Architecture tab is used to create basic objects such as walls, doors and windows, columns, roofs, floors, and many others. Under Structure, we have the basic structure elements such as beams, columns, and structural floors for surfaces. With systems, you will see ducts, tubes, pipes, plumbing, cables, conduits, electrical, and other components. Insert tab gives you access to links to other program files such as AutoCAD where you can also import files and images and also load families or groups from your library. In Annotation tab, you can find all the buttons for putting dimensions, captions, text, symbols, etc. Massing and Site tab aids you to create curtain system, topographies, parking, landscapes, and other site components. Here in the View tab, you can create 3D views, elevations, camera views, and other stuffs. And we have the Modify tab. This is where you can make modifications on elements you're going to create, like basic commands such as Move, Copy, Create Mirror, Measure, Edit Family, and so on. On the top left side of the title bar is the Quick Access Toolbar. This contains the important buttons like Open, Save, Undo, Print, 3D Views, etc. that helps you make quick access on these basic commands.
On the left are several useful panels describing your project. This upper left of the drawing window is the Properties palette that shows the instance properties of the currently selected element. To the lower left is the Project Browser. This shows the order of all the views, sheets, families, groups in your project, like floor plans, 3D views, elevations, sections, etc. The Project Browser is like a table of contents for your project. You can click on this plus and minus sign to hide or unhide the contents of each branch. If you don't see these two panels on your screen, they're probably turned off. You can go to View, then use your interface, then tick on the Project and Properties panel and any other panels you want to be turned on. Here in the center is the main area of the interface known as the drawing area or drawing window. This is where you will have a big preview of your work in the various views of your project progress. In the lower left corner of the drawing area is the view control bar. It contains tools that let you change various aspects of the view such as its scale, detail level and visual style or graphic display options. If you want to view your drawing in wireframe, hidden line, shaded, or realistic view. Each open view or window will have its own view control bar at the bottom left. And the tools on that control bar only affects that particular view. Each open view also has a navigation bar. The navigation bar contains navigation tools like the steering wheels, zoom tools, and when working on a 3D view, the view cube. Many of these interface components can be customized in different ways, so that you can adjust them to the way that you prefer to work with Revit. For this beginner tutorial, we will just explore and use architectural objects. A basic simple house is typically designed from bottom to the top. Starting by drapping a floor, then constructing its walls, followed by placing its doors and windows. And then finally covered with a roof. Now click on the floor button to start drawing a basic floor. When the tool is enabled, the Modify tab opens with everything you need to create. As a basic guidelines, make sure to set up first the unit of measurement. Go to the Manage tab and click on Project Units. Just click on the format and select the units you prefer, then click OK. Then you can start creating your floor. You can specify exact length on your keyboard for accurate measurement. If you're done, then click on Finish Edit Mode. To revise the shape you created, you can always go to Edit Boundary, then apply the changes you want to make. Now let's start our project. We'll start with the floor. Here in the draw section, you can use line, arc, or spline to draw your floor by dropping each of its straight or curved sides. Notice while drawing or editing, Revit shows useful measurements on the current object's side, radius, or angle in respect to the horizontal or on its x-axis direction. You can also type directly your desired specific length and degrees figures from your keyboard. 
Remember, make sure to close the shape you created or else the floor won't be formed when you apply it. You can use available shapes like the rectangle, polygon, circle, or ellipse to create a floor with a defined shape by fixing two or three nodes in the workspace. Revit will show you tips on how to use the current tool by waiting with your cursor. If you make any mistake with your ongoing drawing, just use the escape key to undo or control Z for shortcut. Another feature available are snappings to project endpoints, midpoints, intersections, and also perpendicular or parallel directions and extensions. You can adjust the snap option by going to the Manage tab and then choose Snaps. Click on your preferred snap modes, then click OK. Take note that Revit stays in edit mode while dropping and editing drawings your objects are shown as sketches in pink color. Once these are OK, you can apply and render them with finish edit mode shown in green check on the draw table. Or you can click the red X icon whenever you want to cancel edit mode. But I'll discard the cancel edit mode. For now, I'll click on the green check as finish edit mode. All applied drawings will get filling and volume on the workspace. Make sure to save your project by going to File, Save As, and then Project. Type name for the file. Revit projects are in .rvt file, then click Save. You can save your Revit file to anywhere you want. It is complete drawings with options and customized views inside. Revit also has several features and tools to edit the objects you made. To edit an object, you have to select it first. Enable the Modify tool under the Modify tab and click on the object to select it. The selected object will be highlighted in blue color and will be ready for your next modification. You can use Ctrl X, Ctrl C, and Ctrl V to cut, copy, and paste the objects selected. To remove an object, use the Delete key. If you make any mistake, just use Ctrl Z to undo your last actions. Use the Move tool to move object by fixing the starting and ending point on the workspace. Beside the Move tool, use the Copy tool to make a quick copy of the object. Use the Rotate tool to rotate the object fixing the axis and the rotation angle. You can also change the anchor point by clicking and dragging its central node. Use the mirror tool to create a copy by flipping an object through an axis. With pick axis mirror tool, you flip by using a selected side direction. In Draw Axis Mirror tool, you can define the axis direction by fixing two points. While the objects are selected, these editing tools will act on its entirety, keeping the basic object, shape, and boundaries. To apply modifications on the object's subcomponents such as edges and vertices, just select the object and then go to Edit Boundary. It returns to the edit mode. You can see that our object becomes pink, which means it's ready for editing. Select each object side and node you want to edit with the tools inside the Modify tab.
You can also click and drag this edge and move to adjust its shape. You can edit by using the drawing tool on top to change the overall object shape. I'll delete this side and replace the line with an arc, then click OK. When modifying multiple objects or subcomponents together, you have to select it all first and edit them. To make multiple selections, just hold down the control key and select each element. Another option, you can make a window and hover at them all at the workspace to select them within the selection area. Then you can apply any modify tools you want on the multiple objects, like copy or rotate commands. To remove any selection, just use Escape key. Once the floor is made, you can start dropping walls. Walls are different from floors, since they have their base on the ground plane or any plane parallel to it, and spread in height according to the value set in the top left corner or on Properties palette. Let's start dropping the walls. Just enable the wall tool, then go to the properties for the wall type options you want to use. This contains basic wall options you can select from. There's available materials like concrete, masonry, etc. I'll use brick for my wall. Just click along the floor contours. Since snap is on, it's easy to drop walls along the floor. You can see the walls merge automatically where they intersect near the vertices. This method is the same as how we created the floors using the same drawing aids and tools. By default, you start drawing by watching your project from the top to the bottom in a 2D view called Level 1. As you can see here in the Window Title tab and highlighted here in the Project Browser. This floor plan view is useful to place the wall's base, but it is not the right one to check height and depth of the wall. To see the wall's height, open the 3D preview by clicking on the 3D preview button under the view tab. Or click this 3D house icon on the quick access toolbar on the uppermost top. In this view, you can adjust the height of the walls by clicking and dragging these blue arrows. Or specifying a figure here and on the Properties Palette Wall Height section. If you want to change the point of view, you can use the navigation tools on the right, such as the 3D View Cube. Just click on the view cube on the sides or corner you want to view your drawing. You can use also the full navigation wheel. This helps you maneuver on your drawing. It has option buttons for you to move your drawing using pan, zoom in and out with zoom, or 3D rotate with orbit. You can modify the walls by selecting them and using Edit Profile. At this point, you can use drawing tools to adjust, add, and change the shape of the contours you want for your object. Such as deleting sides and dropping drawing tools. Here on the left, you can see the project browser list all the 2D and 3D views available that you can open on a tab by double-clicking on them. 
By default, you have a single 3D view and two kinds of 2D views, the floor plans and the elevations. The elevations allow you to see your project from different 2D points of view, such as east, north, south, and west. This is the correct view for you to exactly see your object's elevation and is very useful to check the object's height and the floor plan levels. Elevation levels are automatically provided in your drawing like these elevation symbols on the right. Elevation marks are also present on any floor plan view as small objects indicating where the points of view are placed. You can create custom elevations by opening a floor plan view and then using the elevation button under the view tab. Place the new elevation object, then select the icon to click on the square to rotate its direction. Click on it and this blue line will appear. You can click on this to adjust the view range and depth for your elevation. This is useful to provide elevations on irregular shaped objects with corners. See, this is the new elevation we just added. Floor plans are 2D views with a fixed height or level from the ground. By default, you start drawing from the floor plan called level 1, which is the ground level. Floor plans are also used to define object's height. For example, when dropping a wall using a level 1 floor plan, its height spreads from level 1 to the following level 2 floor plan. In both elevations and 3D views, floor plans are represented as dashed lines. Complete with name and height level from the ground. I'll adjust this one to create a new level on top of it. You can create new floor plans by opening an elevation view. Click view and then go to architecture tab, then create a new level. To do this, fix two points on the workspace and use the escape key to apply. To rename the floor plan, just right click on it from the project browser and type on the name you want. We're done designing walls. Now let's start adding doors and windows. These doors and windows lay on the walls directly. So you have to use elevation view or 3D view to place it in your object. Use the door tool to add doors on the wall. It's perpendicularly sets on the floor. Here in the properties are several door type families that you can choose from. Revit's user-friendly feature is that the door base snaps to any floor plan level inside the project, making it very easy for you to place your doors and windows. For placing windows, click on the window tool and then position windows on the walls where you prefer. You can change the window type template to use by going to the Properties panel on the left. These tools are ready-made objects called Families, same as Blocks from AutoCAD. You can also customize the sizes and shapes of the template by going to the Edit Family on top. 
This will open up the family you selected and will be ready for any modifications you want to make. Finally, let's add the roof. Objects laying on planes, such as floors and roofs, are dropped on a reference plane called work plane. By default, this is fixed to the floor plan called level 1, but this is not the correct position for the roof. Inside the work plane section, click on Set to choose another floor plan to be taken as reference. Click on the level of roof, then click OK. Now the work plane is set to the roof level. Once the reference is ready, click on Roof, then use the drawing tools to create the roof using line or arch tools. I'll just draw on the wall contours to create the roof. Zoom it in to make sure you hit the exact end point. Once finished, click on the Finish Edit Mode. When the roof is applied, it is completely flat by default. But you can customize its shape by using the tools inside Shape Editing. In the Shape Editing section, use Add Point and add Split Line to add nodes and lines on the roof. I'll add another split line in this direction. Then use the escape key and click and drag each of these blue node arrows up or down to customize the shape of the roof. You can drag the arrows up or indicate an exact figure for its height. Or type it on the properties section or type directly here in the workspace. Use the Escape key again to apply. Now here's our roof. In case you want to edit the roof, select it and click on the Edit Footprint mode to execute any changes you want. To undo all the points and lines applied, just click Reset Shape. One more option I'll show you. There's another easier way to create the roof. In making the roof, select it, click Roof, and enable Define Slope. Then use Drawing Tool to create the roof line, just like what we did earlier. Once again, I'll trace on the perimeter of the outer walls to make my roof. When you're done, just click on the Finish Edit Mode. As you can see, Revit will define height and depth of the roof automatically without setting any point or line manually. So much easier, right? When the roof is made, you can edit its boundaries by using Edit Footprint. You can revise its depth and shape with Modify Sub-Elements in case you have defined this manually. For example, I want to put roof eaves around my roof. I will drag on these roof lines to extend the roof and offset it around for additional eaves for the roof. I'll add on 1000mm around it as a roof overhang. Just type the exact figure here for accurate measurement. When you're done, then click Finish Edit Mode. Now here goes my roof with eaves overhanging around, which was made easier by using the Define Slope button. You can adjust the project preview by using the View Control bar at the bottom to change its visual styles as your preference. Here you have several options to choose from. 
For more realistic preview, use the Render button under the View tab. Then click Render Options. Thanks for watching. Please check out our channel for our next tutorial. Thank you.